Hi there, uh, nice to meet you here again. So, uh, in this video we are going to talk about the vertical separation, the uh, set of rules of the aviation law uh, which are defined to uh, safely uh, separate VFR and IFR aviation traffic in the air. Particularly in this video we will talk about the altitude flights, the flights with flight level, uh, we will talk about the transition layer, and also uh, we'll talk about the rules for vertical separation of the traffic for VFR and IFR flights, so-called the semicircular rule. So let's start with flights below the transition altitude. Transition altitude is the lower uh, boundary of the transition layer. The upper boundary of this transition layer is at the transition level. We will talk about the transition layer later, just in this video, uh, but now for, let's focus on the on flying under the transition altitude. This transition altitude in the USA is uh, 18,000 feet. In Europe it's uh, 5,000 feet. Uh, it can vary from country to country, depends on the elevation of the average elevation of the surface of the country. So obviously the higher the country is, the surface of the country is, uh, then uh, transition altitude will be higher. Additionally, in mountain area, uh, we add uh, 1,000 feet uh, for reason of safety of the flights. So, when you're flying under the transition altitude, on the altimeter QNH of the aerodrome is set. That means that uh, when an uh, aeroplane is set on the runway of the aerodrome, uh, in this case uh, the altimeter will indicate the elevation of the aerodrome. Above means sea level. So, QNH uh, just indicated that uh, you are uh, using the atmospheric pressure adjusted to the sea level. When you are flying outside of the traffic zone of the aerodrome, you have to set regional QNH. So the regional QNH is the lowest forecast QNH for any aerodrome with that region. That means if you are using the lowest QNH in the region, you are using the QNH of the highest aerodrome in this region. So with this setting on your altimeter, you never read altitude at any aerodrome less than the aerodrome elevation in this region, above means level. By the way, uh, in the United States, QNH is given the, in the inches of mercury, and in uh, Europe, uh, the QNH is given in hectopascals. So let's point it again one more time. Uh, when flying below the transition altitude, uh, we are using and reporting the altitude in feet above mean sea level. So for now, let's imagine we are flying the, uh, above the transition level. Earlier we talked about the flying under the transition altitude. And uh, between the transition level and transition altitude, uh, there is a transition layer Place it with thickness of 1000 feet. So if uh, in this example uh, it's a standard transition altitude, 5000 feet, mean sea level, and uh, the transition level will be placed on the altitude of the uh, 6,000 feet mean sea level. Uh, for United States it uh, will be the same, but just uh, transition altitude will be different. As we talked earlier, it will be 18,000 feet. Okay, so when we are flying above the transition level, now we indicate the position, vertical position of the aircraft, not in uh, altitude, but in uh, flight level. Actually, flight level is the indication of the position, of vertical position, in feet, in hundreds of feet, but measured with the standard atmospheric pressure, is, which is set on the altimeter. The standard atmospheric pressure is uh, 1013 hectopascals, which is in the units of measurement in uh, Europe, and uh, in the United States, uh, this uh, atmospheric pressure will be uh, 29.92 uh, uh, inches of mercury. So we use uh, flight level instead of altitude when flying above the transition level. And uh, how we pronounce it? We pronounce uh, the uh, flight level as, um, uh, for example, flight level 85. Not say flight level 85. It's not, it's wrong. Or flight level 145, as on uh, the example here. So let's point out why we uh, use uh, standard atmospheric pressure for flying above the transition level. The reason is uh, just uh, obvious. 
uh, if we use a different uh, settings on the altimeter on, di on uh, different airplanes, uh, it will not guarantee the unique measuring the uh, vertical position of aircrafts and therefore uh, the vertical separation between aircrafts. Let's say two airplanes uh, uh, are using different altitude setting, pressure setting on the altimeter. That means that uh, they could fly at the same level but uh, with a different indication of the altitude on the altimeter. It brings us to uh, those airplanes to a risk of the collision between them. So now let's say a couple of words about transition layer. As we mentioned before, it's, this is a layer between transition altitude and transition level in, with the thickness of uh, 1000 feet. So, uh, as we said, the transition level is the first available flight level above the transition altitude plus 1000 feet with this current Q and H. So, we don't use the transition uh, layer for en route flying. There is only uh, climbing and or descending available. So, how do we define the position of transition layer? First of all, transition layer is defined by the air traffic service and broadcast by ATIS, Automatic Terminal Information Service. So, the position of the transition layer depends on the atmospheric pressure on regional QNH. On this table we see the dependence of, uh, of this transition layer of the uh, QNH. So let's, ex let's imagine that we have a uh, low QNH and if we really position at the same place, at the same physical, uh, say, altitude above the surface, in low QNH the altimeter will read too high altitude. That means that if you don't change the transition level, it will go down here. In opposite, uh, when regional QNH high, the altimeter will read too low altitude. That means that transition layer will go too high and uh, will take away the usable airspace for flight level flights. That's why air traffic service adjust transition layer according to the current regional QNH. And uh, it physically stays at the same approximately the same altitude above mean sea level. As we mentioned before, the en route flights are prohibited in the transition layer. That means that uh, only climbing and descending are possible in the transition layer. So what's happened when we climb through the transition layer? So when we uh, cross the transition altitude, we have to set the uh, switch from regional QNH to the standard atmospheric pressure, 1013 hectopascals or 2 nanar decimal 92 inches of uh, mercury in USA. And after crossing this point, we start uh, using flight level to express the vertical position of the aircraft. In opposite, uh, when we are descending through the transition layer, so when we cross the transition level, we have to set regional QNH. We forget about flight levels and start using the altitude to express the vertical position of the aircraft. So finally, uh, the, let's talk about the semicircular rule in this video. So this uh, semicircular rule is uh, defined or created to provide traffic separation between VFR and IFR flights and also between traffic flying in the opposite direction. So the idea of this uh, rule is uh, that uh, for VFR flights, we have uh, the 500 feet uh, shift for flight level and that means that uh, uh, all flight levels available for VFR flights end up with the 5. As we see on the example on the table, uh, flight level 5, 5, 6, 5, 7, 5 and so on. For IFR flights, flight level ends up with 0. So we can, as we can see on example, we can see flight level 5. 0, 6, 0, and so on. And we use also magnetic cores to understand which flight level to occupy. So when we are flying to east with magnetic cores from uh, 0 to uh, 179, uh, we occupy uh, odd flight levels, as on this example, flight level 5, 5, 7, 5, and so on, up to maximum flight level 195. And in opposite, if you are flying to the west, westbound, 
uh, we occupy, uh, VFR flights can occupy only even flight levels, flight level 6, 5, uh, 8, 5 and so on. Up to maximum flight level for VFR flights in the westbound direction, uh, up to flight level 1, 8, 5. And the same for IFR, again, uh, flying east we take uh, odd flight levels and flying west we take even flight levels. But I uh, need to mention that uh, Air Traffic Control Service has a priority in assigning flight level. So if they ask you to change flight level, you have to follow those uh, assignment. So that's it for a moment for the vertical separation. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye.